Our market monitor says for the past five years, February has been a good month for stocks, and he thinks that trend will continue this year. Joining us is Jamie Cox, managing director with Harris Financial Group, an asset management firm with more than $650 million under management. Welcome. Nice to have you here, Jamie. Yes. Hi, Sue. How are you today? I'm good, thanks. Listen, it was a rough day on the market today in almost every sector. And um, do you believe the adage that as January goes, so goes the rest of the year or no? I, I, I tend to. I mean, that has been sort of the trend over the last, you know, however many times that, that we've cited it. But I don't think that that this January has just been bad today. It's been bad all month. I mm -hmm. mean, this has been a terrible month. Lots of crisscrossing data, lots of really interesting things happening like QE in Europe. I think that we could probably probably throw this one out because I think there have been so many things that typically don't happen in January happened this year. So I think for once, this may not indicate the trend. A lot of things caused volatility this month. Do you expect yes. that volatility to persist or, or, or do you think that, that some of those uh, disruptions are behind us? I think we're, we're just getting, gearing up for the volatility for wow. 2015. I mean, if you think about it, where, what, what hasn't happened that will likely happen this year to cause volatility? And that's the Fed raising short-term rates. It's going to happen. We saw what happened back when we even discussed it a couple of years ago. Markets were all over the place. So I think we're going to be living with it until the Fed actually raises rates once. And once they do, when we get used to it, mm -hmm. I think the volatility will calm down. But until that time, we're going to be zigging and zagging and probably not going a lot of anywhere in the markets until that actually happens. You think that international markets will reward investors more than U.S. markets this year. Uh, quickly, before we get to your stock picks, where internationally would you go? I think there are tons of opportunities in Europe. I mean, there's it, European equities are going to be uh, a, a real darling relative to U.S. equities. I mean, if you look at uh, the last two years, S&P 500 has really, really outperformed the Morgan Stanley Capital International All World Index. That's going to change. So you can actually buy the index that can get you international exposure, or you can dive into Europe and get utilities, get mm -hmm. automotive companies like Volkswagen. There are tons of opportunities in Europe that don't exist here in the United Why States. Why don't we so, start with, with a utility, National Grid, which is one of your picks, which has European exposure? Yes, it does. In fact, utilities have been sort of the sector of the year, if you will, but they're terribly expensive right now. PE is over 20. I mean, Dominion Resources here in Virginia, 25 PE. National Grid is the only utility that I know of that has a PE in the teens. So it's around 16 or 17 with a 5% yield. It is a great place to find if you're looking for utility exposure in your portfolio and you're afraid of being overweight in the sector. So that's a good spot. I think uh, the Northeast exposure in the United States and also in the UK give you plenty of opportunity to grab some revenue growth and stable cash flows for a dividend that can increase as well as uh, have some share appreciation in the short run. All right. J.P. Morgan is next on the list. Do you think it's been been punished unnecessarily by the market? Oh, my gosh. Banks have just been hammered in, in, in January. I mean, J.P. Morgan was over 60 at the start of the year. It's, what, 54 right now. Uh, it's even more attractive than it was then. It was cheap in the 60s. So what we're, what we're lining up for for the next couple of months with uh, banks is, uh, is, the, is, the, is the results of some stress tests that are ongoing right now. And also, if rates rise uh, in, the, in the coming couple of months, the yield curve, or excuse me, the net interest margin will actually go up for banks, and that's very positive. I think the future is bright for banks, but right now, with yields dropping on the 10-year note, mm -hmm. net, net interest margins are down. It's a terrible time to mm -hmm. be in banking as interest rates drop. But as they rise, this is a good time to be a purchaser of banks. Give me a 30-second pitch on Google, your third choice. Uh, Google is the AT&T of our day. I mean, they, you, you want to look back 10 years from now, and you're going to be one, it's, you'll be in wonder about what Google can do. It is in every single home in America, every single, you know, it, the search possibilities of Google are unlimited. People are sort of captivated by Apple right now, but the company that has the staying power for decades down the road is Google. So if you want a good investment, that's the place to be if you're looking for mm -hmm. big cap tech. Okay, Jamie, thank you so much for joining us. Great ideas there. Have a thank good weekend. Jamie Cox Thanks. with Harris Financial Group.